Today we continue with our uh, videos on uh, the topic of ARPA. ARPA, as you know, stands for Automatic Radar Plotting Aids. And uh, today's video will cover the topics of alarms and symbols, as well as uh, the PPC. The PPC stands for Potential Points of Collision. So we'll talk about uh, what are potential points of collision and how do you create one. Uh, before that, uh, I want to make sure that you guys are aware of the previous videos I have made on the same topic on ARPA. And if not, then uh, the links to the videos are given in the description section below. Make sure you watch those videos as well to get a good knowledge of uh, how the ARPA, ARPA operates and uh, what are some of the functions that it can be used for. What are the, uh, how can you use the ARPA to your advantage? All right. So today, let's get started with today's topic. So as you know that an ARPA has a number of operation alarms as well as indicators and uh, these uh, should be able to be disabled audibly uh, but not visually so different manufacturers they use different arpa symbols however there is a, a list of recommended arpa symbols uh, laid out by the imo imo is the international maritime organization and uh, some arpas will show additional alarms but uh, all must have the following as you see on your screen so first is of course the guard zone warning so an arpa should have uh, the capability to warn the operator with a visual and audible signal of any distinguishable target which closes to a range or transits a zone chosen by the operator uh, the target causing the warning should be clearly indicated on the display. Then uh, you have the collision threat warning or the collision uh, warning. Uh, this uh, is a warning that relates to an ARPA having the capability to warn the operator with a visual and or audible sign of any tracked target which is predicted to close to uh, within a minimum range and time chosen by the operator. So you can set your CPA and TCPA limits. Now this can be set by you as the officer or it can be prescribed by the master. So master standing orders will have uh, the minimum CPA and TCPA laid out for you. So you may have to go by that and uh, you will put those limits in your ARPA. And as soon as a target is uh, uh, going to be coming close to that limit that you have set, uh, the ARPA should be giving you a warning. So the target causing the warning should also be clearly indicated on the display so you know which is the target that is causing the warning. All right, similarly with the guard zone, as you say, as soon as you set the guard zone, uh, any target which comes within the guard zone uh, should also be easily distinguished on the radar screen and it should come with a visual and or audible warning. Then you have the lost target warning. Uh, so an ARPA should clearly indicate if a target is lost other than the target which goes out of range and the last uh, tracked position of the target should also be clearly indicated on the display then you have the brow crossing indicator so some arpas will show a symbol like a large flashing x on a target if it so happens that the acquired target is going to cross the own ship's bow so bow crossing distance should not be mistaken for cpa cpa is the closest point of approach but the bow crossing distance is the distance at which the vessel will cross the bow of your own vessel. And then of course, uh, some ARPAs have a navigation map and lines facility, but it is not required uh, from the performance standards. So the maps and lines can be a useful navigation tool, but care must be used in the preparation and use of the facility. Then you will also have some other alarms which pertain to the ARPA malfunctioning. So if there is any malfunction in the ARPA, then an alarm should indicate that there's some kind of malfunctioning. Sometimes it's very clear as to what the malfunction is all about. Sometimes it may not be clear and you may have to get a ship's electrician or the shore technician to have a look at it when you reach port, of course. And then you have the performance test facility available to you where you can use it to just, uh, it carries out a basic diagnostic test of the ARPA equipment to ensure that all the functions are working correctly. If it not, then uh, of course it is indicated uh, by the display or by the performance report that you can generate after the performance test. So these are some of the operational uh, alarms that I, I wanted to talk about. 
then of course we move on to some additional graphic symbols as a supplement to the vectors are also provided with the ARPA and which are not required under the performance standards uh, as prescribed by the IMO. Now I talked about that uh, previously as well um, but one of the uh, functions I want to talk about is the PPC. So PPC provides you with the potential point of collision. Uh, if I can explain uh, this simply, potential point of collision refers to the course that should be steered to avoid collision with another vessel. So let me show you how and uh, I'll also teach you how to draw it in terms of radar plotting. But uh, potential points of collision is a very useful function provided in the ARPA that uh, not only provides you uh, at what point the two vessels may collide if they are, there, is, there is a risk of collision, but also provides you with the course that you should be steering uh, to avoid collision with the other vessel. So the potential point of collision is normally found as a feature of the Raython ARPA. And like I said, it shows the point of collision if it exists. Uh, on the radar screen or the PPI for track targets and it's based on the fact that if the heading marker goes through the PPC then a risk of collision exists. PPC is only shown in the true vector presentation and it will lie on the true vector or an extension of the true vector. Uh, they do not relate to vector length. Now of course uh, you may not be very sure of what I'm talking about here so let me show you by way of diagrams and then I'll show you how to draw one as uh, through animations as well so that will convey the point clearer to you. So the number of the PPCs uh, shown relates to the course of the target ship and the relative speed between own ship and target and uh, the number of PPCs possible for a target is either 0, 1 or 2 and if own ship is slower then it is possible to have two PPCs. So let me show you. Uh, so you can see here uh, this is a diagram of course and with reference to the diagram uh, you can uh, understand what I'm talking about and then through animations I'll show you how to draw this diagram as well. So if you have a good understanding of what each part of the diagram pertains to then when I'll show you how to draw it then you will know what are we doing there. So imagine this uh, being uh, A is our ship and B is another observed on the ARPA and the EGDIS. Uh, a potential point of collision or a PPC is a point where A would collide with B as long as B maintains her course and speed. All right. So if the speed of A is uh, referred to as SA is greater than or equal to the speed of B, that is your own ship's speed is greater than or equal to the target ship's speed, there is only one PPC. But if the target ship's speed is greater than own ship's speed, there can be two PPCs. So each PPC corresponds to a course of the own ship called collision course or CC as you can see in the figure. Now considering a distance to which the maneuver should be made in order to avoid the collision it's called maneuvering distance or maneuver distance as well as a CPA that is the closest point of approach. Two courses of A that is CA1 and CA2 that is collision avoidance course 1 and collision avoidance course 2 are obtained for each of the PPCs one which passes by the stern of the target ship and another that passes by her bow. So normally and by good practices of seamanship, we normally choose the course that allows us to pass the, from the stern of the target ship, not try to cross the bow. So normally that is, uh, of course, unless it's not possible, then you cross the bow, but we normally avoid crossing the bow of target ships, all right, because uh, it's easier to manage uh, crossing the bow, of, uh, crossing the stern because the ship is then easily going away from you. So even if it is faster, it is better for you. So a predicted area of danger or PAD is an area around a PPC within which it is considered that a risk of collision may exist and therefore it should be avoided. The predicted area of danger is determined by the courses that is CA1 and CA2 and it is an ellipse whose major axis is the section of the trajectory of B that is limited by the intersections of the courses CA1 and CA2 and whose minor axis is half of the major axis as you can see in the figure. Usually due, due to its manual drawing it is not considered an ellipse but a hexagon. So let me show you how it is drawn. So you might be looking at the figure and wondering oh there are too many lines and circles and all this thing going on. So how do I go about drawing this and how do I get the collision avoidance course manually? So it's it's quite simple. I just have to follow the instructions here. So let me show you how. Uh, but before I do that, 
I just want to reinforce the point that if there is only one PPC, uh, there will only be one predicted area of danger. However, uh, if there are two PPCs, then you will get, of course, two predicted areas of danger. So the potential of predicted area of dangers for the safety of navigation uh, can be enormous, especially if they are transferred to the egg disk, for example, in a layer containing them. So therefore, the predicted area of dangers could be treated as areas to avoid having the possibility of visualizing them as well as of associating them with an alarm. So in this way, it is possible to obtain information from the ARPA, which is the anti-collision equipment, but which would be integrated and managed in the ECTIS as well. So if you want to know how to go about drawing the PPC, so you can see here uh, a normal radar plot is constructed with the OAW triangle. If you don't know how it is done, you can watch my video on the radar plotting and uh, complete the basic radar plot and make your report. All right. So this is the basic radar plot. This gives you the CPA of the target, the closest point of approach, how it is passing. Uh, OW is on ship's course. WA is the target ship's course and speed. So of course, I've explained all the radar plot in a separate video. The link to that video is also in the description section below. Please make sure that you watch it and understand how a basic radar plot is constructed and what information you can obtain from it. But once you do that, extend the true vector of the target WA. So WA, like I said, is the target's course and speed. So you should extend the vector of the target WA. So basically extend the line WA. All right. Then join the center to A and extend beyond A. So you can see how I will join the center to A and extend beyond A. All right. So this line is joining A and is extending beyond A. Then rotate WO to intersect the line. So basically you can then draw a circle that you saw in the previous diagram. You can do that. So rotate WO to intersect the line. So once you draw a circle, it will intersect that line. Right. Then join WO and WO dash and double O dash. So what are those points? Those are the points that are there on the radar plot. So I'll show you what I mean. So join these two and join these two and extend it. Once you do that, transfer these lines through the center to intersect the true vector extension. So basically, once you go get those two lines, draw, uh, transfer those lines to the center of the radar plot to, ex to intersect with the true vector extension. So to, to intersect the line WA when extended. So once you've got these two lines, just draw those lines parallel to those lines uh, at the center of the radar plot, just like here. So this is uh, parallel to the WO dash and this is parallel to WO dash, double dash. So you can see one of them is only joining the extended vector line and that is the potential point of collision. So in this case, there is only mm -hmm. one potential point of collision. If it was, if it, the other line would have also intersected the extended vector, then there would be two potential points of collision. All right, so this is how it is constructed and this is where you can get an idea of what course then you should steer. So the course that you should be steering is very clear to you. You can see it is extending from the center of the radar plot. And if you steer that course, you will be clear of the potential point of collision. So that is the point of point where your own ship may collide with the target ship. And if you, if you um, steer the course that is drawn from the center of the radar plot and you can see it's an arrow, it's about 0 to 0 or 0 to 1. That is the course if you steer, you will be clear of the uh, target ship and also passing the stern of the target ship.